morning. I'm standing outside the Abbey. This is where I ended my walk yesterday. But this is the line I need to get into for my 9.30 uh, showing of the baths. So I'm here in Bath to see the Roman Bath. So let's go take a look. I'm not sure if they're allowing video cameras or photos inside, but we'll find out. Uh, this is the great bath right here. As you can see, I'll take more photos as I go in. Uh, they just asked me not to climb on the monument nor take a swim in the pool, but I want to show you this. This is actually really neat. It's not because it lays out what the bath is, but this is for the seeing impaired. Meaning if you come here, you can, you know, rub the dot and find the dot here. And with your hand being blind, you can figure out the layout of the area and get a more, uh, full experience of this. And I've seen this in other places um, in Europe where they have little 3D models of a, of, a, of a cathedral in the town around it for the seeing impaired. So I think it's a really good idea. I get too far ahead uh, this is what the baths used to look like when they first were built and more importantly that right there shows you this natural occurring hot spring the only one in England apparently and then you can see the original temple back there and the original bath complex and this is in the first century AD but by the time you get around to the fourth century AD this is how big the complex became and you can see the oh, excuse me you can see the grand building here, the bath, uh, and everything else in the temple complex. So uh, this is really neat. much video at this point because it's been a bunch of small little display cases but this is actually the temple complex here in Bath so you can see the various columns here and it's kind of the lighting is really subdued to add the ambiance of the salt but this is actually Roman street level here the bath complexes are further back that way but this is the temple complex here and this is the I think the altar Yep, the altar where sacrifices were done. That was a temple uh, monument and part of the other buildings here and then the actual temple itself. So if I show you the video, I'm not sure if this is going to come through, this gives you an idea of what this place looked like coming into this space. So all this is like really, <laughs> it's really neat to think that people walked these steps or all these stones 2,000 years ago uh, coming here to offer sacrifice to their gods. So I'm here on the other side of this. I did some video over there earlier, but I just want to give you another shot or angle of this place on this side. Like I said, this is really neat that this is the actual street level or the courtyard level of the temple complex here. And it definitely smells musty <laughs> down here like grandma's basement those people who know that reference and this actually is the head of the of uh, Sulis Minerva who is the goddess that was worshipped here primarily and according to the little guide this head would uh, be inside the temple with a statue and working in the 1700s digging a trench discovered it 
and uh, now it's back here. But it's very interesting. They said on the, the guide that the only people who get to see the statue was the people who service the temple, the interior part of the temple. So, uh, and the other, once again, what's a nice thing here at this museum is a lot of interpretive things where people who are blind or just kids wanting to touch stuff can touch these things to give an idea of what uh, they're experiencing. So, there we go. really great display is this display of coins that were thrown into the spring here. But what I like about it is they, they segment the coins by the age here. And there's also stacks of coins. Apparently there's like 12,000 coins or more that were thrown in the spring. But I like this visual right here. It tells you how many coins they found in the spring over its lifetime. So you have some really early Republican coins here down to the point where the Spring, comp the spring Temple Complex was formed, and they kind of peaks and valleys. Uh, but this is just a really wonderful display, including some gold coins and some other coins that are worth a lot more money. So right here is the actual overflow from the, the, the natural hot spring. And uh, it's definitely steaming. It gets the heat coming off of it. And it's also uh, bubbly because of the dissolved gases coming out of the water that's under pressure. So apparently there's over a million liters of water that comes out of this spring every day. And uh, the water could be up to 10,000 years old by the time it gets to this point. So you can hear it coming around the corner. It's, it's really neat and amazing. Uh, this is the reason why the Romans built the baths here as this bathing and uh, religious complex. So there's a couple more displays here. So this is one of the uh, stone masons here. And this is pottery, but this is what I want to show you right here. So this is the main drain. So the water overflowing from the spring was allowed to go here, but also, as you can see from the diagram, um, water from the Great Basin and other things could be drained into this. And walk down here. And this is one of the sluices. So this is going out to the main Great Bath. This is what allowed them to drain the water out of the Great Bath, which was really neat. And then coming back over here, the other little piece of history are these things right here. So these are all signet rings or personal seals. And uh, it's just conjecture how they wound up here. Either they were lost uh, by bathers here at the uh, bath or they were offerings of some sort. So this is actually really, really neat. I'm showing you what this looks like. So we're getting towards the end of the tour here and it's been very, very educational and very interesting. done touring the side of the uh, bathhouse. So there's this immersarium here, immersion pool up to your neck of relatively warm water. This is the bathing pool or swimming pool. This is the hot room or caldarium and it's the raised floor so there used to be a fire there heated two baths on either side per the little diagram and this floor was so hot you needed shoes to walk on. This here is, I can't remember the name of this room here, but this is where you would uh, be scrubbed down and oiled down to remove all the sweat and grime from your body before you proceeded over to the rest of the bathhouse. And this is part of the original drain structure right here. And finally, over here, more exposed stuff, some really cool. <laughs> this, is, this is not old, this is more modern. This is just uh, water dripping down, forming stalactites. Like my tights, and then um, this is the changing room area here. 
And the one thing I love about what they've done is, like right now, this is normal, uh, just illuminated lighting, but then they drop the lighting down and then they project a scene over this that matches what you're seeing here. And then they play a little video of what it would be like in this room at the time it was being used. So hats off to them for doing something like that. And we come back out here to the swimming pool. And a little side note is, um, I think the second century AD, uh, Hadrian, I believe, um, made it past a law saying that you had to have separate uh, sexes, uh, uh, separate bathing facilities for each sexes. So they actually converted this bath area into two, two different sides at that point in time. So here we go. And now we're coming out here to the great bath once again at this level. And there's quite a few people here enjoying themselves. I've been here over an hour now, and this is actually a really well done tour. And the reason why the water looks green and murky is because of the algae. But what they, what they said was with the enclosed space originally, this water had been very clean and uh, bathable at that point. But since it's exposed to sunlight uh, most of the day and the elements, it's this nasty green whatever. So you think I would never bathe in it. But you have to remember back 2,000 years ago, closed space, uh, fresh water always flowing through here, draining the bath, refilling it. And also they said, I think they said there's two centimeters worth of lead lining this pool right here. And it's all still sealed up. So it's not percolating the ground. It's still flowing the way it's supposed to flow over 2,000 years of history here. done with the tour it's afternoon so I got here a little after 9 30 so I've been here for almost three hours so one last look at the uh, great bath here and the water still flows out here and there's some other piping here but this is the actual spring that comes up and the Romans built a wall around it but then later on in the 12th century I believe what they said the monks from the abbey up the way built this as a healing pond and you see the brown standing there, that's the level of the water which allowed to have it come up to this level. And then the rings were added by various people and this became a site of healing and comfort from the 12th century all the way on. All the way on. And the pump room here, up here, was uh, added in the either 17th, I think 18th century, the 1700s. And this was a very fashionable place to be. So uh, we're about done with the tour. And so uh, I'm gonna continue listening to my audio guide and we'll be done. Well, this is the end of the tour. Uh, once again, this is the hot room or the hypocast or heated room here. It's a kind of display it. This gives you a really good idea. And they mentioned the fact that uh, either it's over there or maybe right underneath my feet is where the stoke hole was. So they were basically putting charcoal and wood in here to heat this floor. But then they mentioned the fact that uh, Roman slaves, after the, it's been cooled down, they had to come through here and clean out all the soot and ash that would be in the area here, which would probably be a very nasty, healthy, a nasty and health hazard thing. And uh, they're hoping to excavate more to the south here and uh, some additional baths. But right now, in the moment we've all been waiting for is to take in the water. So here we go. I'm going to take in the water. It's all right. Here we go. Cheers to your health. A little more here. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like Calusa water. From my grandparents' house in Calusa. <laughs> ah. And here we go. Oh, I knew it. See? Uh, sulfates number one. Calusa water has a lot of sulfates and then calcium and here's all the list of things that I just took in. And uh, they're mentioning in the audio guide that uh, 
Some doctors prescribe drinking up to five liters of this stuff first thing in the morning before breakfast to help cure you. But if you were vitamin deficient or mineral deficient, this could probably actually help you quite a bit. So uh, this kind of wraps up the tour. I got to put the tour, got the auto guide back on the wall over there and then go to the gift shop and call it good.